Global internet access is distributed extremely unfairly. What I take for granted isn't even available to many. More than 700 million people in sub-Saharan Africa have no internet access. Can this digital divide be closed? Today's topic on SHIFT. If I want to know what my home city of Berlin is currently offering in terms of culture, then a quick glance at my smartphone is usually enough. Theater, exhibitions, parties, everything is just one click away. It's very practical and for me, honestly, essential. I can find most things in German, which is good. Language is also inseparable from culture. And for me, it's also a given that photos of sites such as the Brandenburg Gate, the TV Tower and the Berlin Olympic Stadium are there in abundance. But this is not the case for all languages and regions. For example, Southern Africa. The world-famous Victoria Falls. The nearly 1,000-year-old city ruins of Great Zimbabwe, a World Heritage Site. The streets of Harare, Zimbabwe's capital. On Google Street View, Tawanda Kanema couldn't find any trace of them. After looking up a few places in Zimbabwe on Street View a few years ago, I realized that you know there was no coverage in much of the country, and I wanted to see how I could contribute towards bringing coverage to my hometown and in the process begin to improve the accuracy of maps in the region. At his own cost, he travelled back there from his new home in the US to get the first shots in 2018. He wanted to represent the country and its capital Harare online. After all, about 3 million people live in and around the city. The first footage that I collected, which came to about 24, 30 kilometres in Harare, basically I was doing this uh, as a personal project. The first recordings served as a test run, so that he could return later with better equipment. He wanted to publish these beautiful locations, like the Victoria Falls, in top quality resolution, and the deserts and coastlines of neighboring Namibia. He was looking for support, and so he turned to Google. After I had validated that I had the right setup, all I needed was a high resolution camera. That's when I approached the Street View team at Google and Insta360, and they made this camera available. Having direct contact with these tech giants isn't only important for equipment reasons. Anyone wanting to make their photos and videos available on Google Street View has to jump through hoops to upload the material. The publishing workflow itself is really, really complex uh, because you're, you're publishing terabytes of data to the Google server and uh, in order for you to do that, you need permissions. After I had you know, individually published a few thousand images through the interface to Street View, I decided that I needed to do this properly. Several journeys and countless terabytes of photos and videos later, not only Zimbabwe, but also other digitally unrepresented regions are now available online thanks to Tawanda Kanema's initiative, such as parts of Namibia and Canada. It's amazing how far Tawanda Kanema's project has spread beyond his homeland. Even putting remote areas of snowy Canada on Google Street View, crazy. However, the narrative shows that countries, people and cultures that are not the focus of international tech companies are represented badly online. This is particularly true for languages. And that's the problem. For speech-based applications, Alexa do this, as well as for translation software. Until now, language assistants from Google, Amazon and Apple have not spoken a single African language. Chennai Chair is the special advisor for the Mozilla Innovation Team for Africa. She says the imbalance needs to change as quickly as possible. Over the next decade, um, speech will become the primary way people will interact with devices, from their laptops, their phones, to digital assistants and retail kiosks. So it's quite important that as um, the African continent, which already faces issues around the digital divide, um, in terms of the difference of people who have access to technology and who don't, but also digital inequality based on just generally not everyone um, communicating in English or French, which are some of the dominant languages on these platforms. For this reason, the Mozilla Foundation has launched the Common Voice Project, a language database that will be used for speech recognition tools. 
More than 75,000 volunteers have recorded individual sentences, and currently there are more than 13,000 hours of voice recordings. After English, the second largest data set is in the African language Kinyarwanda, which is spoken in Rwanda and Uganda. The data set is also used for a COVID-19 information app. However, this example is still the exception. When you look at where the people who are actually able to develop the systems are located, usually European and North American contexts. So that definitely skews um, how technology is developed and who gets served first in terms of the new innovations that come up. But then it's important to recognize that something has to change and we have to support people to have their own languages represented on the digital map. Photographer Tawanda Kanema has also experienced this. The people he's encountered on the fringes of the digital world are not only in Africa, but also in northern Canada. Here he documented Ontario's ice roads, which only exist in the winter when the temperatures are low enough. The region's language and culture has only been marginally represented on the internet up to now. When you go to a certain place and uh, people speak a spe specific language, uh, you find that a lot of the services they consume are probably not available in the language they speak. Um, so a, a big component of the global population is having to make um, a compromise where they have to accommodate a language that is more globally accepted. And in the process, the, la the local languages are being lost. In its current form, the internet endangers entire languages and cultures. If you want to oppose this, then why not take part in the Common Voice project? Just visit the website, choose the language and off you go. It's a really simple but powerful way to support diversity. Student Bonaventure de Sue has a similar goal. He is programming a translation app for Fon, a language that is spoken in Benin, in West Africa. Bonaventure Dosu is an IT student from Benin, living in Germany. He's developing an app at the University of Bremen to make his mother tongue digitally available. I program a translation model that could help me to communicate better with my mom. My mother speaks Fon, which is the most spoken language in Benin. He doesn't speak Fon fluently anymore, so he can't write text messages. Bonaventure d'Orsou grew up speaking French, the official language of the West African country. Like the education system is French, every administrative function is in French. Uh, whenever, for instance, in high school, whenever you were caught speaking French or your, any other uh, native language, you were kind of expelled like for two weeks. Hello. A detriment to language diversity. Hello. The internet also contributes to this because English dominates the online landscape. Despite there being more than 2,000 languages in Africa, Google Translate only offers 14 of them. DeepL, another online translation program, does not offer any African language. Those uh, platforms do not support African languages, for instance, which makes the thing a little bit centric to Western languages. Bonaventure Dosu wants to help combat this with the app. He trains it with speech examples from Benin, my name is Kiki Kelly. I come from Benin. The speech examples in Fon are converted into data sets. A neural network uses these to learn how to understand better sentence structure and grammar. When enough data has been collected, the app will help Bonaventure d'Orsou to bring an African language into the digital world and keep it alive. Someone who's really fighting to preserve their culture. Impressive. Digital infrastructure in Africa is still a huge problem. Fewer than 40% of people in Africa have internet access. The situation in Eritrea, South Sudan and the Central African Republic is especially bad. Outside the cities, accessing online information is extremely difficult. This in turn restricts economic development and creates a vicious circle. Without economic development, digital infrastructure can't be improved. But the good news is, there are people proactively fighting this in Africa, for example, in one of Kenya's poorest regions. The Turkana County in northeastern Kenya is sparsely populated. Not everyone here has electricity, and internet access in these regions is rare, slow and expensive. 
Juliana Rotich is committed to equal opportunities for a digital future. The IT entrepreneur is supporting a startup hub here where young people can learn to program or can receive support for a business idea. It's not only the most remote tech hub, I think it's the most inspiring place that reminds you that technology still has the capacity to inspire, to create solutions, to, to create a sustainable living for anyone, anywhere. The NGO Learning Lions collaborates with Juliana Rotich to support young professionals. Their training offers include programming, web design and media design. The goal is to help them become freelancers who can work directly from their home region. Just because people may be living outside of what is considered the core of either tech culture or culture in general or media in general or business doesn't mean that they don't have value to bring. Only those who have access to digital information and communication platforms can exist in the digital world. That's why it's so important for Juliana Rotich that remote regions are given access to the internet. Does this mean that because regions like this are less important markets for digital companies, their culture is worth less? No. Photographer Tawanda Kanima hopes that everyone will soon be able to represent themselves and their culture online. The biggest barrier to the expansion of virtual maps has really been access to the technology and accessibility of the technology itself. As the tools become more accessible, I think we're going to see a lot more participation, we're going to see a lot more representation, and we're going to see probably a more complete picture um, across the globe. Sadly, achieving digital equality is still a long way off. However, African tech pioneers are hopeful that this gap can be closed. That's it for me. To end, a global vision for the future by Chennai Chair. My personal signing star goal is to have all languages represented on, on these spaces, right? Languages represented, preserved and respected. Mm -hmm.